G'day guys, my name's Ben and you're watching The Long Gun Project. And in this episode, we're gonna be talking about increasing your hit percentages at long range by improving your ammunition. Now I will provide my disclaimer up front, I am not the best shooter in the world, but I do understand this stuff pretty well and I am in a position to share with you what I know. Now everyone will tell you that to get hits on targets at long range, you need an accurate rifle. And of course, that's true. To be more correct, it needs to be both accurate and precise. So the question is, how accurate and precise does your rifle need to be to get consistent hits at long range? For most, there's a magic number, and that number is one. One minute of angle. Now that is the precision standard for quality factory rifles and also for military sniper rifles. But is one minute of angle actually good enough? Some precision long range shooters will say, no, you can and should have a rifle that shoots better than one minute of angle if you wanna get serious about getting consistent hits on targets at long ranges. And most precision long range shooters will reload their own ammunition in order to get the best precision and accuracy from their rifle. So let's say we wanna get serious about increasing our hit percentages on targets at long range. And we decide to get rid of our old one MOA rifle and replace it with a half MOA rifle in the same caliber. Why the same caliber? Well, two reasons. First, we're gonna assume that you reload for this caliber and you know it fairly well. And two, it also allows us to do an apples for apples comparison. Now we're gonna put all this information into the Applied Ballistics Weapons Employment Zone Analysis Tool, and we're gonna see what our hit percentages look like when we go from a one MOA rifle to a half MOA rifle in the same caliber. Now the caliber we're using for this exercise is the 308 Winchester. Boring, I know, but it is very well known and it's common and the majority of long range shooters will either have shot or still shoot a 308 Winchester. Now let's set all the parameters in the Applied Ballistics WES analysis tool and have a look. The ammunition we're gonna be using is a 175 grain Sierra Match King traveling at 2,615 feet per second. We've set all the atmospherics for tomorrow's weather and the muzzle velocity standard deviation is 15 feet per second. So to set a baseline, let's look at our one MOA rifle using this ammunition on a 10 inch plate at 1000 meters. 52.2%, not a bad benchmark to start with. Now let's look at our half MOA rifle using the same ammunition under the same conditions on the same target. 55.9%, now that's not a massive increase over the hit percentage that is our baseline certainly not as much as we might expect. Now, if we wanna get serious, let's go and see a gunsmith and fork over a big amount of money to get a 0.1 MOA rifle built just for us. So let's try a 0.1 MOA rifle with that ammunition at 1,000 meters and see what our hit percentages look like. And the winner is, oh, 57.1%. Now, to be honest, that's thoroughly disappointing, considering the amount of money that we potentially paid to have a 0.1 MOA rifle built by a gunsmith. So potentially we've just spent a shitload of cash getting a very, very precise rifle built for us, and a 0.1 MOA group is practically one ragged hole at 100 yards in almost any calibre. So why hasn't our hit percentages dramatically improved? Well, it all comes down to the ammunition and its consistency. Now, what do we mean when we talk about consistency. We're talking about the difference in muzzle velocity between one shot and the next. We're also talking about the consistency of ballistic coefficient between one projectile and the next, essentially bullet uniformity. And at long ranges, that uniformity also matters. But that's something that I'm going to focus on in a separate episode, so for now, let's just talk about muzzle velocity. The standard deviation, or SD, of the muzzle velocity of our example rifle was set at 15 feet per second, which is representative of good quality factory ammo, or a reasonable hand load. So how much of a difference will improving the consistency of our ammunition actually make? Now let's run the same conditions with our old faithful one MOA rifle. But this time, let's reduce the muzzle velocity standard deviation from 15 feet per second down to 10 feet per second. 10 feet per second would be exceptional factory ammunition or a carefully made hand load. So our one MOA rifle under the same conditions on a 10 inch plate at 1000 meters with ammunition with a muzzle velocity standard deviation of 10 feet per second gives us a hit percentage of 
0.1%. Now that's better than a 0.1 MOA rifle using ammunition with a standard deviation of 15 feet per second. Now let's do one more go with our one MOA rifle, but this time let's reduce the muzzle velocity standard deviation from 10 feet per second down to five feet per second. Now five feet per second in standard deviation really represents the highest quality hand-loaded ammunition. So at a thousand meters on a 10 inch plate, that gives us a hit percentage of 72.6%. Now that is a good hit percentage. Now this is all great on a computer screen, but what I'm now gonna to attempt to do is load my 308 ammunition for the rifle behind me into two lots. I'm gonna load 20 rounds in a way that should give me a slightly higher standard deviation, hopefully somewhere around that 15 feet per second mark. The next 20 rounds, I'm gonna load as carefully as I possibly can so that I get a low standard deviation, hopefully somewhere around the five feet per second mark. Then we're gonna go into the field, we're gonna shoot these groups and we'll see what the groups, hit percentages, and also the vertical dispersion looks like in real world conditions. All right guys, we're now at our usual shooting spot to test the theory of what we've discussed in live fire. The ammunition that I'm firing is a 175 grain serum match king loaded in the same brass with the same basic charge weight. The only difference is I have 20 rounds loaded as precisely as I can possibly get them and I have another 20 which I've deliberately loaded within 0.1 of a grain slightly up or down of the main charge in order to try to create a larger standard deviation to illustrate the point that we're, we're getting at here. So what we're gonna be doing is I'll put a few siders down to make sure I can center my group on the target. The target we've got is at 800 meters, which is 874 yards, and we're gonna put a witness screen behind it, which is cardboard. And that way, any high or low or slightly wide shots, we can still capture so we can look at that in our analysis afterwards. Okay, now that we've shot our two 20 round groups, let's have a look at the results. Now, unfortunately I didn't shoot to a thousand yards because the wind was pretty switchy and I wanted to make sure I captured all my shots either on the target or on the cardboard witness screen behind the target. I shot the high standard deviation ammunition first and at 808 meters, I got 13 out of 20 rounds on the plate. And the muzzle velocity standard deviation ended up being 17.9 feet per second across all 20 rounds, which is relatively close to what we were aiming for. Now that gave us a hit percentage of 65%, which if I'm honest is a bit lower than what I was expecting. But the vertical dispersion of that group for 20 rounds was 447 millimeters. Next, I shot the low standard deviation ammunition and got 19 out of 20 rounds on the plate. And that gave us a hit percentage of 95%. Now the muzzle velocity standard deviation for this 20 rounds was 8.6 feet per second. So not quite the five feet per second we were aiming for, but it's approximately half of the previous lot of ammunition, so it helps illustrate the point pretty well. The vertical dispersion of this group was 304 millimeters. Now that's a 32% improvement in vertical dispersion over the high standard deviation ammunition group. Now I'm the first to acknowledge that these are not perfect scientific laboratory conditions or results. It's me with a basic factory gun in a paddock on a windy day demonstrating the practical application of a theory but I'm pretty relieved to be able to say that the results were what the science told us we could expect. 
So the point to all of this is that the consistency of your ammunition plays a vital role in the precision and accuracy of your entire rifle system. So if you are someone who has a genuine one MOA rifle, don't give up. You can achieve higher hit percentages at long range by improving the consistency of your ammunition. So before you throw old faithful on used guns and decide to spend up big chasing a higher hit rate, honestly ask yourself, is it the consistency of your ammunition that's been letting you down? Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to leave a comment and hit that like button. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you all again on the next episode of The Long Gun Project. See you later.